Since the first reports of intrahepatic BCG in 1976, it's been established as a standard care. Most guidelines recommend BCG maintenance for one to three years, whereas others include maintenance as a spectrum of options along with induction. So when we look at individual randomized clinical trials that directly compare BCG induction plus maintenance to BCG induction alone, they do not provide convincing evidence that support maintenance. Recommendations for maintenance are based largely on indirect comparisons in meta-analysis that suggest maintenance is more effective than induction alone, both for reducing recurrence as well as delaying progression. So randomized clinical trials, for the most part, are woefully underpowered, and I'll show you some of that in a minute. There's lack of good quality individual patient data, and you need that to really do um, meta-analysis comparisons. There's wide variations in TUR quality, which has direct impact on recurrences. None of the studies to date used enhanced imaging, including blue light or narrow band, and BCG retreatment for like those that got six weeks when they recurred is largely unknown. So we don't know, like, oh, just give them a little bit more, maybe they'd have done just as well. This is the maintenance study that we've all seen where there were uh, benefits, but other maintenance studies, such as this one done quarterly, this one done monthly, this one done every six months, did not show benefit to that booster phenomenon that we want to think about when we're doing flu shots. So we'll review a little bit of the data quickly on seven randomized clinical trials looking at BCG plus maintenance to induction alone with or without retreatment and talk about the powering as well as the way these studies were conducted. And I'm not going to gloss over what Eric did, that worsening free survival composite endpoint that gave BCG maintenance its traction for three years because it's kind of a, a catch-all and maybe a little bit of a garbage endpoint. So we'll look at seven meta-analysis trials. Um, three of those included just observational cohorts, the demonstrated benefits of BCG maintenance to reduce disease recurrence and delay progression compared to various control groups, and we'll talk about the suboptimal data and then new evidence that one year, which was introduced earlier, of maintenance may be sufficient for sure for those patients with intermediate, which is a lot of the patients that we manage, and that the optimal duration for those truly high-risk patients remains unknown. So this is a summary of, of the studies that have been done looking at maintenance, and the maintenance scheme varied from different installations at three months. Uh, they could have up to four installations over a year, up to 21 installations in three years. So although they come in a six pack, and that was one thing, and then three every six months was another option, I wonder if the nurse made that one up too, because I don't know how they got that, and no one knows if that's really the right way to do this. Um, Enrollment in the studies, look at the, there's wide variations in these patient numbers. Some had the lowest 42, some had up to 380. Um, there were lots of patients that recurred in these and some that progressed. So uh, there's significant variability in lumping these together. Concerning the recurrences, three of the studies found absolutely no evidence of benefit for maintenance. Those are largely not talked about. Um, concerning recurrence, two studies reported non-significant trends for maintenance, and then only two studies reported a difference in favor of maintenance. So you could argue that even in the world's literature, there's enough evidence to suggest that we've got a problem. Only one study demonstrated a reduction in disease progression with maintenance, but that is that catch-all composite worsening free survival. That included death to any cause, and I'm going to get back to that in a minute, muscle invasive disease, which was a minority, or just simply an initiation and change in therapy. So like they could be having side effects, not tolerating it, we switch gears, and that gets included in that catchphrase. So the SWOG study demonstrated three years of maintenance, and that's largely the study that we are talking about. Um, there was a survival, uh, worsening free survival benefit in that study, but We've talked about that, and now look at the number of patients that died during the study. One in five patients of the recurrence events just died. They didn't die of bladder cancer. We don't know what they died of. They could have died of heart disease or lung cancer, but they are included in that data that supports the use of this maintenance for three years. It's a comorbid population. Many of these patients likely had other causes for their death. 
Another problem with this is that composite, um, looking at uh, the frequencies of these things not reported, so we don't know, and we don't really have any idea how many patients were retreated after just six weeks. So we're comparing like three years to six weeks. In reality, you'd retreat a patient with at least another installation or maybe even do a little maintenance for up to a year and then see how they do. Um, another criticism of the study was that there's some statistical stuff. And I won't go into it. I'm not a statistician. This was picked out of this European Urology Critical Review. But in, if they were to do the study today, they would have mandated to do better statistical powering of the study. And if they had, this would not have met the high bar for significant reduction in even their composite endpoint of worsening free survival. 30% of the randomized patients were excluded after that first six-week course. They are just thrown out. We don't even know why. But it, if you were entering the study and you used more of an, an intent-to-treat analysis, we would probably would have seen a lot different results there, too. So it's perhaps they cherry-picked the patients to go into the maintenance um, by throwing out up to 30% of the patients enrolled in the study. That would not pass the muster for a good statistical trial. We glossed over the toxicity. But it can be real, and I do remember the last time I saw a patient who had a bladder cripple situation because they'd had way too much BCG over the course, and I've actually seen patients that we've managed, although less frequently, with severe toxicity that required either INH, reduction in their dosing, and rarely we've had to admit patients for full court uh, press with steroid management for their BCG, but it does happen. Um, about 50% of all patients have side effects, and up to 5% in the trials, it was deemed serious enough that they had to stop therapy. Um, it was also glossed over, but this is a study where everybody's motivated to get them to the finish line. Only 16% of the patients in the clinical trial could complete the full three-year course. So you have, to take, you have to realize, even in the study, three years wasn't given to most people, and that's the real world. Um, the EORTC study that was alluded to, 25% of the patients completed the full three years of treatment. So we know that when, even though we might want it or think that it's the right thing, the reality is they're not going to get it. Um, it was already mentioned that one year of maintenance seems appropriate for some of the intermediate risk patients. Um, and so certainly not all patients need full three years. Um, I think that's true. So in summary, kind of arguing against this, uh, there's a lot of things we do as surgeons, the quality of the TUR, the use of enhanced um, light to try and detect these tumors, which will also reduce the recurrences, um, the therapeutic value of additional maintenance BCG compared to limited BCG or induction only should be weighed against the potential adverse events, added costs, et cetera. So in conclusion, I think the optimal duration of BCG treatment in patients with non-muscle invasive disease remains unknown, and we do still need more work to be done there. In addition, three years of maintenance, um, despite the fact that it is in the guidelines, uh, guideline panels do include the possibility of using one year of maintenance and induction BCG with retreatment um, of the recurrences as possible options, especially for intermediate risk patients, and alternatives to three years of maintenance should have lower level of evidence and, and grade of recommendation. So we know the, the parable of the emperor's new clothes. It's where really in their hearts everybody, nobody believed it was true, but everybody thought that everybody else believed it, so they all went along with it. And I think that's a little bit of what's going on here with this three years of maintenance for BCG, that really none of us are able to really pull it off very often in our own practice, and it's probably too intense. So thank you for your attention, and I guess we'll turn it over to the voters.